My name is Vincent Reinhardt. I'm the Chief U.S. Economist here at Morgan Stanley. I'm joined by our new colleague, Ellen Zentner, the Senior U.S. Economist. And this is our first Fed day together. Going into the meeting, we know the Fed is short of both of its goals, with the unemployment rate tracking well above its estimate of the natural rate and inflation falling even further below its 2% goal. Uh, today, the Fed has to explain its plans for its balance sheet, update its forecast in the summary of economic projections, extend its forecast to include 2016, and potentially refine its threshold providing forward rate guidance. Ellen, it's up to you to take us through what exactly they did. Thank you. The important thing is that the Fed decided not to taper. A big surprise, but the devil is always in the details. So in the statement, we learned that actually the assessment of the current economic conditions is stronger. Fundamentally speaking, the economy is stronger. Uh, but financial conditions have tightened, and that concerns the Fed. So they decided not to taper at the September meeting and left all of their purchases the same and also their concerns that inflation is still lower than they expect. In the summary of economics projections table, we got a mark to market expectation of growth in 2013. 2014 growth was also revised downward a little bit, but otherwise there were no alarming details in terms of the Fed's economic outlook, where they think inflation is going, and they even think that the unemployment rate is going to return to an optimal level in 2016. The Fed has been continually disappointed in its outlook, and so it's revised downward 2013 growth consistently. But we do want to note that they decided to strengthen the language on current economic conditions. So they're not so concerned about the outlook that they think tapering should be off the table altogether. Also, FOMC participants provided their expectations for when the first liftoff in rates would begin. Those expe expectations continue to be concentrated in 2015, but we do want to note that even though they expect the unemployment rate to be at an optimal level in 2016, the median estimate of the long-run federal funds rate at the end of 2016 is expected to be just below 2%. That implies a very, very gradual pace of tightening when the Fed decides to start lifting rates in 2015. So what did we learn today? I think it's important to note that the fundamental economy is strengthening. That's in line with the incoming data we've seen and also the forward-looking data on the outlook that we've been looking at. The committee is also concerned about the spillover effects of recent tighter financial conditions. That's what led them to delay the choice to taper at the September meeting. The tapering is still on track to begin before the end of the year, though. That's important because in the statement they said they will review the decision to taper at every meeting. So they don't want market expectations to be funneled solely into the December meeting. That leaves October as an option. And the pace of rate hikes when they do begin to start normalizing rates is going to be unusually gradual. So what are we looking for in the coming weeks? Well, we've got a nomination of a new Fed chair. We think it's going to be Janet Yellen, probably announced next week. The signs in the minutes will let us know how strong was the consensus around not tapering. Was it a very strong consensus? And if it was, were there at least several members that believed tapering should occur at the next meeting or two, certainly before the end of the year? How concerned are they about the housing market? Bernanke and his presser listed housing, tighter financial conditions recently, and just the lingering effects of the financial crisis as reasons for a very gradual pace of normalization of policy when the Fed does start to decide to normalize rates? And also, did they have a very serious discussion about the thresholds and rate guidance? That was surprisingly missing from the minutes from the June meeting. So we'll see uh, if they're included uh, in more detail in the minutes of this meeting. So three weeks from now, we'll have more details. At Morgan Stanley, we think it's time to reimagine the research report. Reports should follow your train of thought and provide the context you need. Reports should make serendipity happen a little more often.
providing a richer, we recently visited Apple suppliers in Asia and came away with more positive, more interactive experience. Morgan Stanley, reimagining the research experience.